3. This is what the Amplified Version said. It said, therefore, since these great promises of ours, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates and defiles body and spirit and bring our consecration to completeness in the reverential of reverential uh, fear of the Lord. Now, and, and so it talks about completeness. And when I look at the word completeness, uh, I think about perfection and maturity. And so it's telling us to uh, separate ourselves, to cleanse ourselves, to cleanse, our, to purge ourselves. And so I call it the purification process. And so it's telling us to come to a place of maturity where we perfect it in him. Not that we be perfect, but we perfect it in Christ Jesus. And so it begins with this. In order to begin a, 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 a purification process, in order to be cleansed, in order to be holy, it always talks about a separation. Mm -hmm. It's talking about a separation. And it's talking about a come out. And it's talking about uh, not doing the things that you used to do, not thinking as they do. How do I know this? Because if you go to the sixth chapter, the previous chapter, and in and, and, and the 16 and 17 verses say this. And what it says, and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For, for ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And then 17 say like this, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separated, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And so what God immediately let us know is this. In order for us to be to begin the holy process, to be able to come out from the things that we used to do and the things that uh, that, that held us down and kept us from God, you must come out from amongst the people who do it. I know y'all don't want to hear that. And so the first step of being the person that God calls you to be is going to cause you to separate from some folk. Huh? That's, that's, that's the first thing that's going to have to happen. You're going to have to get around you're going to have to come out from the people you was at if you want to stay seen. That's right. I say if you want to stay seen. You're going to have to come out from around the people who was doing the same thing you was doing. Why? Because they will pull you in before you pull them out. Mm -hmm. Guarantee. Right. And so God said, wherefore come out from among them. And so he's looking, he, he, he looking out for our own soul. It's, it's, even if we, we can come up here, we can get delivered. God can do a work. We can feel good. We can do earth, all of this stuff. We can last a week, a month, a year, or whatever. But if you don't change your surrounding, you will be back. You will be back. You will be back. And so with this purification process, it means we have to begin to separate and discern uh, who we should connect ourselves to. And so uh, the scripture reminds me of this. It reminds me of, uh, and I think my brother said this morning, I beseech you, there, you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, huh? present your wife as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. That's the least you can do. He said, that's the least. That, that's the least you can do. That's your reason. I ain't asking you to do something that's so stretched far out there. I'm telling you to do what I require of you to do. And now when I require you to do a thing, I give you the power to do a thing. Mm -hmm. So I haven't asked you nothing that I haven't given you the power to do or the victory to do. I gave you the victory over it. And so if you stay in it, it's because you want to. It's because you want to stay in it. And so God is not calling us to do something that he hadn't equipped, equipped us to do. And so he said, in the beginning of your purification process, we're going to have to lose somebody, lose some folk. That's the beginning of it. Now that's, that's, even, before, that's even before we begin to purge ourselves mm -hmm. from our own self. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing we have to do in this process is we got we to gotta discern. We got to add it all up. We got to look and see who we got, who we got around us. We got to discern their motives. Are they good for us from where I'm going? Not for where I'm at. Are they good for me for where I'm going? Are 
somebody good for me for where I'm going? Or would they keep me connected to my past? Right. Because anything that keeps you tied to your past is not of God. Amen. And so even if you gather a church, right? And, if you, and if some churches do this. And we gather on the basis of darkness. What do you mean? We gather on the basis we used to get high. Right, right, we got it. It seems like a good thing. We just get here because we all got high together. But we don't have no vision and no purpose. We we gathering on our past instead of gathering on where we're trying to go. You got a problem. And so we may come from the same spots and come from the same backgrounds, but we don't intend to stay there. And we gather because we want to go higher. We want to go to another dimension. We want to go to another realm. We want to get to know God. We want to touch God. We want to know Him as He as He is. We want to know the, in His power and His resurrection. We want to know him and I lay him down and I get up. We want to know him. We want to hear him. We want to talk. I need a touch from God. That's why we get together. We get together because we want to see God. I want to touch God. I want to taste God. I want to see how. It's the old taste and see how good it is. I want to taste and see how he is. You can't see it be good because unless you taste it. And so we get together on the premises of, of tasting God. Of knowing who God is even though we may have a check of pain. But we don't come together just because of our check of past, or we'll stay at our check of past. And so the beginning of it is this. We got to start checking out the folks around us. Because guess what? We fight not against flesh and blood, right? Principality. Principality and powers, right? Spiritual wickedness in high places. We got, we, so we got, so look, even though you get free, if you keep going around demons, you're going to get some more demons. That's right. Even though you go around and get rid of yours, and God deliver you from yours, if you keep going to them places, they'll jump. They'll leap. They'll attach themselves. And then you got to struggle all over again. You got to struggle all over again. And so when I think of the purification process and our natural body, what does that? The kitten. Right? And so we think of the kitten. And even uh, as I spoke, I was talking about Cindy, and they were saying they were watching her because her kidneys wasn't functioning right. And so I, I started beginning to think, but how does it apply in our spiritual realm? They said, because this is what the kidneys do. The kidneys discern what's good and what's bad. Right. I know what the kidneys discern, kidneys got discerned. Kidneys let, let it know if I'm going to let you in or if I'm going to let you out. And so God says that's in your spiritual realm. You're going to have to be a kid. You're going to have to be able to discern who comes in and who comes out. <laughs> you can't let anybody in your house. You can't let anybody in your car. <laughs> you, can't, you can't let anybody just come around you. And it ain't that I'm better than nobody. It's just that you got too much stuff on you. I didn't, I'm fighting enough with my stuff. I don't need your stuff and, I, and my stuff too. And so God says this. It's the kidneys. It's the filtering process that does the that, that, that does the, 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 the purification. So, 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 so our kidneys sitting there now protecting us. They protecting us. It says, look, it's, it, 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 in, the, in the Bible it says this. This will uh this will uh, this will determine your joy, your happiness, your, all this by the filtration of getting the dirty stuff out. This determines if you're happy or not. That's right. Mm -hmm. Not your money. Yeah. This determine, so the filters, the, look, the kidneys filter it out, right? They discern and they get rid of what they're supposed to be. And then uh, by it getting away, you got energy. energy. Mm -hmm. You got energy. You got strength. You got joy. You can move. You can think. You look, you even go, because the kidneys do this, you can think right. Mm -hmm. You can obtain knowledge by the discernment. Of what's good and what's bad. And people say, don't judge me. Well, I'm discerning this. I ain't judging. I'm just discerning. I'm just discerning. I discern that you shouldn't be here. And so, and so, so, so God is calling us to be just like him. He called us to be in our spiritual life. He's saying, I, I want you to do, and the kidneys is the most inner part. If you get in the Bible, it's, it's behind the ribs, it's protected. And you get into the sacrifices and the things of God, and they call it the most inner parts. They call it the heart of God. It's because that's the important. That's the that's important. That's important to the life. 
Without the filtration, you already a dead man. You got poison in your system if you don't discern what's good and what's bad. And so God is calling the saints to be a, dis a kidney. A kidney to their own self. A kidney to their family. Discern what's over, whatever's good and whatever's true, whatever pure. You, you got to be able to know what, what, who, who, and what you can have around you. And so in order for the purification process to even start, you got to start filtering out some hope. I had to tell a young man that last night. And a young man, told, he called me last night. And he, I guess he didn't want to tell me it was him that was getting high. Them dude told me, buddy, look, like I'm green or something. Let me tell me. He said, I don't know. He said, I want to ask you something. He told me all this stuff. He said, well, uh, I, I, I don't really know. That ain't what I really called you for. And, and he said, uh, I, want to, I want to ask you about something. He, he played again. I want to ask you about something. You know, I really don't know nothing about it. But I'm going to ask you because... I heard you say something about it. And I was like, dude, come on, man. What are you talking about? He said, he said heroin, man. I said, yeah, what about it? Right? He's playing game, right? He's playing stuff. And he said, what about it? He said, well, I got a friend, right? <laughs> he said, well, I got a friend. He said, well, I got a friend. And, um, you know, how do you help him get off? How, how, can I, how, can I help, how can I help him get off? Right? <laughs> what are you saying to me? I said, well, first he need to admit it. He got a problem. <laughs> tell him, say, he got a problem. <laughs> right? And then I tell him, look, I said, well, he got he to gotta get away from the folks that he around. First. First he admit he got a problem, and then he got to jump ship. Go, he got to go somewhere. And I said, no matter who it is, you got to get rid of everything that's around you. And then you can begin to work on yourself. Right? And so he never told me it was him, right? He just said he got a friend. Well, I said, well, tell your friend this, right? What else? And then I said, you want to come to church tomorrow? He said, uh, no, nah, man, I look kind of bad, man. I look like I'm getting high, but I ain't getting high. I'm a little <laughs> He said, man, you know, you would think I'm getting high, but man, I ain't really, I'm stressed, man, you know? <laughs> hey, they think I got saved and I'm a woolly look mom or something. I don't know, man. And then what he said, he said, man, I'm small, man. You know, I ain't had a haircut in months and this. He said, I look like I ain't getting high, but I ain't, I ain't getting high. And so, he gonna stay there, right? He gonna be there. He, he ain't admit it. And so he ain't changing his environment. He deciding who, and he think he, he playing me. He think he playing me. He ain't playing me. He, playing me. he think he ain't playing me. I'm free, buddy. Look, I'm free. I can say that. I'm free. I got a t-shirt and everything. Look. <laughs> then dope and free. <laughs> God of my. And so I tell him, man, uh, you got to change this. You got to do this. Well, I say your friend, you know, you tell your friend. Tell your friend all of this stuff. And so at the end, he says this. Yeah, know what he's talking about. I, man, people are crazy. He told me that and he says this. He said, I don't, he said, be honest. I really can't say why I called you. He said, but sometimes you just need to hear a calm and voice. And you know, and they'll calm you down. I said, yeah, I know what you mean. A lot of demons call me to calm them down when they don't want to come out. Mm -hmm. They'll call me just to get peace. I, he said, he, I ain't telling them that. This is what he tell me. I just need to hear a calm and voice. No, you need to hear this Holy Ghost. You just want to stop getting tormented for a minute. You don't want to come out. You just want to, you just want to stop harassing you for a second. You just want to start tormenting you for a You just want to for a little bit. You know what I mean? You just want to be able to think a little, just a little bit. You don't want it out. But you just want to, you just want a little bit of peace for a little while. Well, that's why you called me. You think I don't know that? A lot of people have been calling me lately just to get peace. And you think I can't see it? You, you think I can't see it? And so I tell them, man, you gotta, you gotta change your, your surroundings, bro. That's the first order of business in the process. And so, when you think of the metaphysical, I don't want to get like I'm smarter than that. When you think of the metaphysical uh, functionality of the kidneys, right? This would say, they are the organ responsible for the power that arises uh, from the natural genetic abilities and capabilities. They are the organ responsible for the power that arises from 
They are the organ that's responsible for the power. They are the organ that's responsible for the... They are the organ... You got to be a king. If you want the power, you got to be able to discern who around you. They are the organ that's responsible for the power that arises. You can't have no power that arises if you ain't discerning where you at and who you at. And so that's what the kids do. They will determine how much power you have or what the abilities you will be able to have or possess or how strong you are in the kingdom or in your walk because of the filtering out the stuff they don't need. Mm -hmm. They're filtering out the stuff they don't need. And so next it says this. In short, we can say that our kidneys can be activators of our genetic potentialities. Our kidneys can be activators of our genetic potentiality. Our kidneys can be our kidneys can be activators of our genetic potentiality. That means what? Everybody wants somebody in their hands on it to activate. It. But if you start discerning, you'll be activated all by yourself. They would, that would, you start getting rid of some stuff, you will be activated and you will have power just by disconnecting from some stuff. Just by denouncing some stuff. You got to denounce generation stuff. Mm -hmm. Generational curses that come through the blood. You got to denounce some things. You got to you gotta tell God, I don't want to get it out. I know, I know my daddy, my daddy, daddy, and their daddy, daddy. No, I, I don't want it, God. I counsel that. And I counsel that assignment, that, 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 uh, that scheme, that tactic, that anything. I curse it in Jesus' name. Come out. And come out. And then you lose God's power in it. And so you got to be ready to to detach yourself from anybody or anything or any generational thing. Especially if you have witchcraft in your family. I'm going to just say that. I don't know where that came from. But I'm going to say it. If somebody in your family that was connected to you, your mama or your daddy or whatever, and they did, it's a certain thing called generational witchcraft that have come down the bloodline. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? And so all you, if you want to be free, you denounce it. I denounce that person and that. And if God take me, take it out. Take, take it out. Take it out. And you ask God to take it out. And he delivered you from just like that. We are like, it's not our fault. Some, some stuff we get just because of our folks have it. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably like you, the problem is just three and four generations. Curses go back three and four generations. But the blessings of God go a thousand, four. A thousand. And so we, we begin to deal with this darkness. It's like, that's purification. You begin to open up and just say what you need and what you want once God revealed it to you. And so it says this. On the other hand, the weakness of this organ can be manifested by individuals that are controlled by fears. This time about the kid. It said, on the other hand, the weakness of this organ can be manifested by individuals that are controlled. What? Your kidneys can get weak because you're scared? That's why they say fear will kill you. That's why, that's why fear will kill you. If your fear, if you're scared and they can weak, weaken your kidneys, and your kidneys is not discerning or filtering right, then you're getting poisoned and you're getting, you don't got activated, you ain't got no energy, nor are you power. And so, and so, these kidneys can be weakened by, by our fears. That's why we gotta attack fear. And say, God said, I haven't given you the spirit of fear. But a power, love, and sound mind. He said, you got a spirit, but it ain't mine. Y'all see that? And you, yeah, you got it. And it is a spirit, but it ain't mine. And so we got to deal with our fears. Don't let your fear overtake you. Confront them head on. Back, like, whatever happened, like, we was in the street. We said, come on, what's up, what's up? What's up? You, you tell fear, what's up? What are you talking about, boy? Well, 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 let's do something then. And you attack that thing. The thing that they say you can't do, you go head on and go do it. And go take it back and possess. They say, I can't do this. I can't. I'm, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go get it. And I'm going to do it. And so when, these, when the fear of uh, weakness weakens the kid, their kidneys, it, it begins to damage the motivation and their will. When they get weak, your motivation gone. Your will gone. You're not activated. And then your power gone. And then it says, and generating the tendency of Getting stuck in various life situations and challenges. And so they get stuck. They in limbo. That's the spirit of limbo. Huh? That's the spirit. Limbo. Warm. Lukewarm. Limbo. On the fence. I want God, 
but I'm on this. Yeah, yeah, I know what I'm talking about, right? And so it is believed that just one of the uh, kidneys, it is believed that one of the kidneys do the work for, for the purification. So it's believed, they say it's believed that one kidney do all the work for the purification, while the other one concentrates on the functionality of keeping uh, the likeness of the spiritual life and the substance of, of the other bodies. You got a kidney responsible for spiritual things? Oh, Lord. And so, but one taking care of all the purification, the other one taking care of the rest. And so they says, and in the Old Testament, they call it the reins or the most inner parts. And the Hebrews always associate that with the affections, with our affections. If they're not working properly, our affections be off. What do you mean? They ascribe them to our knowledge, our joy, our pain, our pleasures. When your kidney's not working, all of these things are out of whack. All of these are, are out of whack. And so we say, what is discernment? Discernment is this. Discernment, spiritual discernment is this. It's a gift of discernment. And it tells you whether it be of flesh, whether it be of the devil, or whether it be of God. All, any three. And so whatever situation that arises or every person, you, you got to see, did it come from God? Did it come from the devil? Or did it come from myself? And if it came from yourself, or if it came from the enemy, you, you know it's no good. And so it's the, having that ability to see, even if a person talking to you, you can see if they're coming from a godly place or they're just trying to be fleshy, just trying to dog you out. You can tell. And they can act, even when they act nice, you can say, they won't nice. You'll be like that. You'll be like, they're trying to be funny. You all know what I mean? So you'll be like, so whether they fake it or not, that don't even matter. You'll be able to see through that. And the thing about this, most of us you had it in the world. We have, we've been having it and possessing it for a long time. And then we get to God and don't use it. We use it all in the street. We, 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 we use this, we use that. And then we get here and then we don't pay attention to it. We shut it off. And so this, the purification process first starts with our outside. And then once we control our outside, we begin to work on our inside. And so it says this. So then the kidneys are doing in the flesh what we ought to be doing in the spirit. They, give, they are an example in the flesh, showing us what we should be doing as spiritual beings in Christ. The purification process. And so, in closing, because I don't want to be long. In closing, in order to be purified, in order to be cleansed, in order to be holy, in order to be what God called us to be, you first begin to take a look at your outside surround. And you begin to see the things that you need to eliminate. Once you begin to delete, eliminate things and you position yourself where you can succeed. Some of us don't even position ourselves where we can see. So see, we don't even set up a support system and the right people around us so they can help navigate us on the road that we should be on. I don't understand how we're going to be a whole lot better and we don't change nothing. Well, they say it like this in the book, in the wall. They said, it says this. It says, uh, 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 you can't continue to do the same thing and expect different results. They say it's insanity. You are you crazy. I don't care how many people lay hands on you, how many tongues you speak in. I don't care what you do. If, if, if you stay with the same people and you keep doing the same thing, you will be back at the same place. Getting the same result. And you must be insane if you think you're going to stay free and keep the same folk. That's insane. Or keep doing the same thing, but you're going to get better. That's crazy. That's crazy. And so we got to get rid of some folks. We got to cleanse ourselves and we got to uh, cleanse our space. We got to get rid of some places. We got to get rid of some things. We got to get rid of some family members. We got to get rid of some jobs. It's this time to begin. It's, do you know a job will kill? Some jobs are assigned to kill you. To kill your, your script, your energy, to kill your spiritual life. Some, some churches are assigned to kill you. Some churches are killed. Some churches are assigned to take, to keep you where you at, to keep you with no knowledge, to keep you dancing and jumping on your head, and you don't know nothing. And to keep you just. Phony is on no, some churches are set up to keep you phony. That's right. And playing 
playing games all the way to hell. All the way to hell. So even we got to get rid of some churches. It's because our joy depends on it. Our knowledge depends on it. Our destiny depends on it. Our peace depends on it. Our success depends on it. Our sanity depends on it. And for some of us, our very lives depend on it. So now you got to choose this day. Hey, not only who you going to serve. I know me and my house will serve the Lord. But you got to choose if you want to live or not. It comes down to that. Play this song for me, baby. Amen. But it comes down to that.